Okay, Kevin, are you ready? Okay, four, three, two, one. Excited to have the Revelers in the Roadhouse. One, two, one, two,
the lights go down if you ain't got love And you're a pauper with empty hands if you ain't got love And you can't hear the birdies sing if you ain't got love If you ain't got love, the Revelers are here in the Roadhouse on KXP. It's great to have you guys right. here. Is that a Bobby Charles tune? Uh, no. <laughs> who, who's to, who, whose song is that? That's uh, that's for me. The ultimate I made that. compliment. I made that. Thank you. That's, really? that's actually the ultimate compliment. That's Thank you. you. That's you. Bobby Charles is the greatest. Bobby Charles is the greatest. This is then Ch- that Bobby Charles then Chaz Justice. There you go. <laughs> Chaz Justice on guitar. Chris on saxophone. Eric Fry on bass. Glenn Fields on drums. What a rhythm section, by the way. And Daniel Kulik on guitar, fiddle as well, and then the baby face bearded one, Blake <laughs> Miller is here on accordion. That's me. Thank he you. Was, thank you. Was born with that beard. Now, Blake. <laughs> Blake, I understand these guys corrupted you at a young age. They did. I was I was stolen and taken away from my hometown of Iota, Louisiana, by these guys when they were in the Red Stick Ramblers. Right. And yeah. we had a little talk with his parents, told him we we're going to take him on the road and wouldn't get him into any trouble. And then before I left, my dad said, "You know right from wrong." And that's it. That's all he said. <laughs> <laughs> and he just nodded his head. Rhetorical question. <laughs> Now, you're touring on this debut record, and I've been referring to you a bit as a kind of a super group all-star band out of Louisiana, because many of you are founding members of some really prominent other bands, such as? Yeah, the um, Red Stick Ramblers, Pine Leaf Boys, Cedric yeah. Watson and Bijou Creole. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I forget all the ones that mm-hmm. I got kicked out of. <laughs> <laughs> so now, why this band? Um, How did it happen? Why not? Because yeah. <laughs> we were all available and we needed a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, the record's great. It's got a bit of a swamp pop feel to it, as well as the traditional French Cajun music. Uh, explain to me, uh, you know, your your attitude toward the swamp pop and uh, and why you decided to pursue that kind of sound. Well, somebody asked me to describe this band one time, and I said, "Well, it's kind of like the Red Stick Ramblers in that we, you know, we play a bunch of different." styles of music but a little bit more modern so instead of 1930 we're going for more like 1950 mm-hmm. <laughs> right progressing right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. great uh, the uh, there's a Treme connection as well I, I, I'm guilty of only seeing the very debut episode how many years ago because I haven't had cable for yeah. a while but uh, I understand there's some sort of Treme thing about you you've been on the show or something right yeah, we, we, uh, we were, we were we, featured on it last Season. Right, right. This se- season number three, uh, we we actually filmed. Uh, they have a, a little half last yeah. se- season uh, number four. We did that one too, but we were all over season number three, and uh, Red Stick Ramblers, and we we play a uh, we get to be Lucia Micarelli's band on that yeah. one. Okay, so. gotcha. Yeah. And it goes yeah. through our trials and tribulations and yeah. misadventures. I guess you could band say band naming. We got yeah. kicked out of that fake band too. <laughs> yeah, we got yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice. Hey, you life. know, the last time I saw you, we were uh, uh, trolling the hallways of the Delta Chelsea in Toronto as part of that Folk Alliance event. Folk uh, Annoyance, yeah. And uh, you guys were, were great because uh, it's hard to explain what that is like, but if I can just kind of put it uh, simply, it's, it's, a, it's a music convention in a hotel yeah. in which you stay in the hotel and there's showcase events on the typical second floor showcase yeah. rooms. And then at nighttime at 10.30 on, there's this... These hall, this whole two floors the, of yeah, rooms that are rented by publicists and labels and yeah. whatnot, and then you guys perform in these tiny rooms with the beds removed from the rooms. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. surreal. You can it's, walk down the hallway and hear all sorts of weird sounds coming out of these hotel rooms. And you look in, and there's no one in the room except ooh. for this person in yeah. the back with a guitar <laughs> right. standing in front of a curtain. It's can Daniel be really referred surreal. to it as. The, oh. Go ahead. <laughs> Daniel referred to it as the theater of the absurd, for sure. Yeah. And then you, you were playing in the, uh, the the Hearth Music Room with our friend Devin, and yeah. uh, you turned the room into a party, of course, because you're from Louisiana. Yeah, that that <laughs> Devin's room was great, man. I, I I sat down, I showed up early specifically to check it out, and just sat down and was totally entertained for like four acts before we had to go on. It was awesome. Our friends Laura, my friend, uh, well, our friend Laura Cartesi played, and uh, some some new friends of ours from uh, St. Louis, Kelly, and uh, oh, I can't remember Kelly's partner name right now devon would remember but they were great they run the uh the st louis uh, folk school mm-hmm. good folks and then uh then we got our shot and we just threw the chairs out the door and 
Yeah. Had a good time. Yeah, yeah then you made great. derogatory comments about folk music, and then you said everyone <laughs> should start dancing, yeah. and they did. And really, as an observer, for me, as, as a northern white guy standing there against the wall, I realized something that I always had known about uh, you know, Cajun and, and Louisiana music is that it's a social music. Yeah, absolutely. And standing against the wall, being a wallflower and watching, really isn't what you do with this kind of music. No. So it makes us nervous, actually, to watch <laughs> people just watching us. Tell me a bit about just the, the history and, you know, the, the heritage of French music in Louisiana, about how it is a social music. Well, I mean, it's, it's been uh, kind of a social mechanism for a long time, bringing people together. They used to have house dances a long time ago, and in the small communities, there would be one house at a time that everybody would show up at. They would move all the furniture into a different room and put the kids in the bed, in a room in the back, and then dance in the living room and play in the corner. And it's just kind of been evolving ever since then. They moved into dance halls and now there's clubs and festivals and it's just. Yeah, it's really blowing up down there. It's just a great yeah. spot. I, so I, I personally don't understand why people stop dancing with each other, <coughs> men, and, men and women or men and men and women and women. What I don't understand like how people go home at the end of the night together when they can't touch each other. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, don't, I don't get that. So to me, this music is, you know, you could be the ugliest guy there, but if you're a good dancer, you can walk you up to the shot. most beautiful woman in the room and ask her to dance because she's going to want to dance, you know? Right. So Mental note taken. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Revelers right here. They're in the Roadhouse on KXB. How about another song? Sure. I'm going to do another original song called uh, In the Proof, all about math. Why? Why? Ruby fingers dripping down the glass Frame a fingerprint line up gripping till the last Started then discarded way too fast Lovers here did pass. Business Street awaits the market trend. And a deal made with a handshake and a pen. And love is like a handshake in the end. Proof that once two friends were just two friends. It's in the Across the classroom floor Biology and apologies implore An empire of evidence can ignore Proof that once was love will be no more It's in the
All right, the Revelers are here on KXP in the Roadhouse. Great to have you guys here. Thank you very much. What was that song? Uh, a song called In the Proof that I wrote. Very nice. Yeah. Let's talk about the uh, the art direction on your latest album. It's a self-titled album called The Revelers. It uh, has an attractive kind of MCM, mid-century modern design to it. Who can explain? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll field this one. <laughs> So we. I mean, where's the Spanish moss and alligators? Right. <laughs> where, you mean you mean the crawfish? That was the other yeah. band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the crawfish circuit. I think it's been done. Cover. Yeah. We um. We're pretty stubborn as individuals, and we went through a couple of different ideas, and we have some really good friends, Allison Bowl, and actually Allison Dehart and her husband Peter Dehart have a. Uh, Design design company called Make Made, and so they did it for us. And we said, "What was the words, G? What, what did we want?" Can't say. Oh, I don't know if they're suitable for radio. <laughs> right. So we went through an album idea, and we were like, "No, you know, we want it to be X blank, 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 blank." So basically, we got that. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what that means, but it's, it's <laughs> a good cover. It's, cool. it's a great cover. I, I appreciate the cover. How about the Cajun? Mardi Gras party. Uh, I, you know, one of your people sent me an, an email a couple of days ago, and there's a picture of his some Daniel, might be Daniel or someone on the back of someone playing fiddle, of course, in traditional Cajun. Oh, that was Peter. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, probably Chaz. That costume. was me and Chaz. Yeah. Oh, it was okay. Yeah. So explain to the audience uh, how Cajun Mardi Gras celebration is different than, uh, say, a New Orleans Mardi Gras celebration. Ooh, it's night and day, really. It's um, Cajun Cajun Mardi Gras goes back to. I guess 15th century France, and it's a traditional, traditional event where there's not a, there's no parades, there's no beads, and everyone participates. Right, it's not a spectator sport. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you would you would go around the country and basically beg for um, a potato or a chicken or something like that, and they're gonna they're not just gonna give it to you, they're gonna make you dance and make you do something for it, then they're gonna let it go and you chase the animals around or the potato or whatever chase the chicken yeah and then uh at the end of the day you all come back to the same place and have a dance and then make a big gumbo yeah and there's so there's just several parties everywhere uh i know joel has that big party up in Eunice at his house and but there's several others as well yeah there's there's a mardi gras for every community pretty mm -hmm. much yeah who wants to talk about Black Pot, the Halloween uh, festival? I think Glenn might be the best to field this All one. All right, I can do that. What is Black Pot? Uh, well, it's sort of a festival that uh, we started on a dare. Uh, our good friend Jay Unger, um, we, were, we were talking to Jay about headlining some festival, and, and Chaz and I were kicking around the idea of starting a festival, and he said, oh, I, I, I think it's a great idea. The best way to headline a festival is to start one. And then we're like, oh, yeah, haha, ha, that's great, Jay. It's really funny. And he said, I dare you to start it. And so the next day, we got on the phone, and we started calling all our friends and stuff. And we just basically threw a party and said, hey, if there's anything left over at the end of this party, we'll split it up amongst all the bands. And that's kind of how it got started. And then it, you know, and then, you know, uh, Lindsey Young, um, the singer for the Red Stick Ramblers, um, said, well, why don't we have a cook-off part of the, of the uh, festival that, that, you know, uh, is based around cooking stuff in the black pot, cast iron pot, which is kind of the traditional way of cooking <coughs> Cajun food. And those are kind of the two basic elements. Oh, uh, well, that and uh, we were the guys. I, I don't include myself in this. We're going to this thing called the, um, uh, the Clifftop Appalachian yeah. Fiddle mm -hmm. uh, Festival yeah. or something sort like that. Sort of the Fiddle Festival, Bluegrass Festival mentality of camping and picking. Yeah, and yeah. you go and you yeah. camp and you trade tunes with your neighbors and you cook out. So we we, the, we really enjoyed that element of, of that particular festival, so we threw that in there too. And It's just yeah. kind of a mixture of things we like about our favorite festivals yeah. and places we've been um, across the country. And, and it seems to be popular and growing all the time. Yeah, it, it, it's really nice. It's um, yeah. What I love about it is it's it's the one time of the year where we don't have to go anywhere and all of our friends from across the country come to the same place right. and we get to see everybody at once and that's really sweet and is it around halloween yeah it's the last weekend in october every okay, year cool so. and there's a website for it i'm sure yes yeah. uh, blackpotfestival.com yeah speaking of cooking uh, i found this book it's called cajun cooking jackie's collection for you it's a cookbook oh, yeah uh whose mom is that that's my grandma that's my dad's mom bruno's mom yeah bruno's mom <laughs> <laughs> and Miss Jackie, my dad, Miss Jackie, <laughs> Grandma, G Ma. It looks like a real get. Like people should search this out. Where can I find it? 
Jackie's house? <laughs> <laughs> My grandma's house, yeah. <laughs> We're going to start bringing them on the road with us. But it's as actually well. a published cookbook. Yeah, it is. I mean, I think you could probably go on to uh, what's, what's Floyd's website? Oh. Floydsrecords.com. Is it Floyd? Or, yeah, Floydsrecords.com okay. yeah. or something yeah. like that. Floyd's Record Shop. You can look up Floyd's Record Shop in Ville Platte, Louisiana. And yeah. Because he's the one that uh, published it. So. Well, I'm going to uh, post the uh, the recipe on my blog, American there Standard Time, for the, uh, the uh, turtle sauce uh, piquant. Sauce piquant. Turtle yeah. sauce piquant. So some good stuff. So listeners, beware. Uh, check that out and uh, make some sauce. Yeah. This is the Revelers. How about one more song? All right. Yeah, we're going to do one. I'm going to sing one that uh, Daniel wrote with a good friend of ours, Kelly Jones-Savoy now. Uh, Joel's, yeah. Joel's new wife. Congratulations, Joel. Yeah. yeah. So it's called uh, Play It Straight. Here we go. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> the game of love. Play it straight or you'll lose every time. Count the chips, cut the deck, trust in you to play it fair, bet it all without a care. Lately I'm losing every night, and there's a new lady look by your side. You can have a two-headed coin, or a way Cheating's not the way to win the game of love. Play it straight or you lose every time. on KEXP. Great to have you here. They're touring on their debut record, self-titled record. Look for them at a town near you soon. Great to have you. Here's to Louisiana, where people eat better, drink better, tell better jokes. Oh yeah, and then there's the music. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. Thanks right. for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you.